Okay, really quickly, this is going to be a very short video, but this is going to discuss using the built-in output of your device versus using rewire. In the very bottom left corner of your Soundminer window is the rewire icon, and it will light up red if rewire is actually active. So by default, Soundminer is always going to use the built-in output of your device. So whatever my Macintosh is playing out, that's what Soundminer is going to use. So in this case, I'm using the digital output. So every time I play a sound here, Basically, it's playing out the Macintosh output. Wherever that's going, this is what I'm listening to. There's something called Rewire, and Rewire has the ability to take audio and send it directly to your DAW. In this case, let's say Pro Tools. I'm a Pro Tools user, so I want to be able to audition, for example, multi-channel files, so 5.1 files. Well, my built-in Mac output is just stereo, so I don't really have a way to audition 5.1 files easily with the built-in output of my Mac. But many people want to be able to listen in Pro Tools. Another reason you might want to listen through Pro Tools is that you could build a fader if you have a control surface to set the audition level. So you could have Soundminer basically on a fader. In Pro Tools, you could adjust the volume up and down as you're listening to sounds. You can also adjust the volume here using the audition volume level here, but it might be more convenient to do that on Pro Tools. So let me show you how you would set that up now. So I have here a very simple Pro Tools session. I have some audio tracks. Let's say I want to audition using Rewire through Pro Tools. Well, how do I go about that? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to make a new aux track. And in this case, I'm going to make a 5.1 aux track because I want to be able to audition multi-channel sounds through Pro Tools. So I'm going to come here to new track, make a 5.1 aux track. I'm going to just call it Soundminer. I now need to put a plug-in on this track, which is how Soundminer will pass information to Pro Tools using Rewire. So I'm going to call it my mix window. So I'm going to come to my plugins, and under insert, I'm going to choose multi-mono plugin. And under instrument, you'll see here Soundminer Engine V4. Now, by default, it's not reading any of the information from Rewire. I need to come through here and I need to basically set the channel preferences. So the first thing I want to do is unlink in Pro Tools so that I can set each channel to input the right thing. So right now I'm on the left channel of this plugin, so I want to tell Soundminer to listen to the left channel coming through Rewire. I'm going to go through, I'm going to do this for each of these, the center channel. Oops, it's going to put to the center channel. The right channel, I'm going to link to sound minor right, left surround to left side rear, because that's where the 5.1 will default to, and the right side to right side rear. Uh, these are the channels coming in from sound minor. And that's all I have to do in Pro Tools. But now you'll see that if I go back to sound minor, Rewire is still not active. Well, sound minor will look for Rewire on its launch. So if I simply quit out of sound minor and relaunch it, it should find Rewire because Pro Tools is running first, and this is important, Pro Tools has to be running first. And you'll see now, down in the corner, the Rewire button is lit up. So now when I play sounds, basically if I just go over to Pro Tools, you'll see the sound is coming in on the left and the right channel here. Now I don't have any 5.1 audio files in this little test group of files here, but if I had a 5.1 file and I hit play, you would see that it would be playing in 5.1 through Pro Tools. And then whatever output of this track is going to is how you're going to hear it. So you would send this directly to your monitors. So what are the downsides of using Rewire? Well, it introduces a little bit of latency. And for Radium, the sampler, when we ultimately look at that someday, uh, Radium can't use Rewire. The, the latency is just too much. It would drive you crazy. Rewire also, even after all these years, tends to be a little bit buggy. Sometimes it just doesn't like to work. And sometimes you have to sort of force quit something and relaunch it and things like that. You will find every once in a while that Soundminer, when it tries to open, when it tries to connect to Rewire, it may fail. And you'll actually see a message that says, if this happens, if Soundminer hangs, you have to quit out of relaunch. Also, to use Rewire, it's important to launch in a certain order. So in order for Rewire to work, the program using Rewire has to be open and running before I open Soundminer. Otherwise, Soundminer doesn't see the Rewire plugin and grab hold of it. And one other thing to recognize is that you have to quit in a particular order. So if I switch back to Pro Tools and I tell it to go ahead and quit, I'm going to get a message that says, hey, Rewire is active. One or more Rewire applications didn't terminate. You need to manually quit those. So what I actually have to do is go back to Soundminer, quit that, and now I can come to Pro Tools and quit that. So that's just a very quick video on Rewire just to explain when and uh, how you can use it. And in the next video, we're going to do a really quick crash course of loading sounds in, working with sounds, sending them to Pro Tools. Just a very quick crash course overview of using Soundminer to sort of hint at all the possibilities of what you can do and give somebody who's brand new to the program an overview of how you would use it. And then we'll really start breaking down the program into the various components.